Hello. In the last video, we went through making a workflow, stitching together a couple programs to complete a task. In this video, I'm going to go through an already existing workflow and explain the steps in a little more detail. Again, this workflow is going to be for a basic de novo assembly of a bacterial genome. So here we are again on the home page. I'm going to go to the top tab and click on workflows. You'll see the test one that we created in the last video, and I have another one that says de novo assembly. If we click on the drop down here and hit edit, we will see each of the steps that I'm going to go through one at a time. So just like you saw in the last video, you see the forward and reverse input read. And as a quick note, you'll see that I moved the screen. You can do that by holding down the click and dragging it so that you can view larger and larger portions of the screen or navigate to where uh, you would like to view. You can also click on the specific tool. When you see that four-way arrow emerge, you hold down on that, and then you can drag this uh, piece of, of uh, this little box into different places, which will actually change the way it shows up in the workflow when you run it, which we'll see in the, in the next step. So we'll go through this step-by-step. Uh, so we see our forward and reverse read right here. As we saw in the draft video, uh, the trimmatic step, which actually works to improve the quality of your reads by throwing out things that have low Q scores that are shorter than a specified length that really don't help with your assembly and may actually introduce errors to your finalized genome. What you'll also notice here is that there's these green stars next to each one of these outputs. So for example, you'll see Trimomatic puts out four specific output files, paired and unpaired reads, which we discussed in the last video. Now, one thing I did is uh, click this little green dot and I'll show you by clicking this other one. And what you can see is when you hover over that, it says marked data set as a workflow output. All unmarked data sets will be hidden. So that means that when I run this workflow, if I don't wanna see uh, something, uh, a piece of the output file from a program, I can just leave it unclicked and click the two pieces of the data that I want to see. And then that way, that'll give me access to the cleaned forward or reverse reads, but I won't see the unpaired reads, which I won't end up using in this analysis. So that's a, a quick tip on, on this as well. Now, the next piece that we have on here is something called FastQC. And what this program does is it allows you to uh, uh, assess a number of different metrics for each one of your read sets. It will give you things like the distribution of lengths, the distribution of Q scores, any repetitive sequences, any adapters that may be left in your sequences that would uh, introduce contamination. Uh, and we'll see that a little later when we actually run this workflow and go through the output. You'll see what the output uh, FASTQC looks like. It's uh, in HTML format, and this is a very common tool to have in, in a workflow like this. So basically what I'm saying is take the forward and input reads, run Trimomatic to clean up the data, run FASTQC on the forward and reverse reads so I can evaluate how well that cleanup did, and then pass those output files along to my de novo assembler, which we discussed in the last video, that I use uh, Unicycler, which is usually for hybrid assemblies, but in this case, when used with short read data only, for example, from the Illumina MySeq, it works as a spades um, optimizer where it actually produces better and cleaner assemblies with the cost of a little more computation and a little more memory. But for us, uh, we're more re we're more interested in a, in a good uh, accurate genome than necessarily saving some extra computational time on the back end. So out of Unicycler, what we'll get is a assembled genome and FASTA file. We'll also see, uh, see another format file that's called a GFA file that is a assembly graph file. Now there's a program called Bandage that allows you to download these files and view them in a graphical user interface and visualize what your contigs look like or what the assembly graph looks like in your final assembly, your final de novo assembly. And that'll allow you to evaluate how well that assembly was and how, uh, how confident you can be in either the, the, uh, the order of your contigs or how some of those contigs were pieced together. 
And maybe in a later video, we can go through on how to evaluate uh, a gra assembly graph like that and uh, what a good graph looks like versus a bad graph. So this output of our finalized assembly out of Unicycler goes to a couple of different places. One of the places that I have it go to is uh, a tool that is just says export data set. And you can find this under the Galaxy tools, but what this is useful for is exporting that FASTA file of your de novo assembly back out to a folder on uh, the RC Hypergator uh, storage. And that way you can have a directory on there or a folder on there where all of your assemblies can go for a specific project. For example, if I'm running this on a set of clubs yellow pneumonias, I could create a folder on there in my shared data that says clubs yellow pneumonia and all of my assemblies would go into that folder so that I can either have them for long-term storage or use them in other types of analysis down the line. Uh, and we can explain in, in a little more detail in a, in a later video on uh, how that file structure is and how that would work with the export. Now, the most important thing that happens after the assembly step is annotation. And Proca is uh, probably the most common uh, annotation tool for uh, prokaryotic species, which uh, comes in, which is where the, the name comes from. And what this does, it'll go through your de novo assembly, look for coding sequences. And when it finds a coding sequence, it'll identify what that uh, coding sequence is based on a number of established tools and using uh, multiple different ways to do so. If uh, you think of the easiest way is just a blast homology to something known in a database where we say, okay, we know this is the ERMC gene that confers macrolide resistance based on its nucleotide identity to all these other ERMC examples that we have in the NCBI database, for example. But it does this for uh, species. And it also has some species-specific or genus specific databases. I think well, one of them is for Staphylococcus and maybe they have another one for Streptococcus. Or you could build your own database for known proteins that are in your, or known coding sequences that are in your species. And this has a lot of output, but the main things that we're gonna focus on are two file formats that are GFF, GBK. So GBK is your GenBank uh, file format. GFF is the file format that I'm most interested in because it is the input file format for another program called Rory, which is, allows you to do pan genome analysis and identify uh, your quote unquote core genome, those genes that are shared with 99% or greater of all of your uh, uh, species within or all of your taxa within your sample that you're gonna be analyzing. The other things that I'm interested in are the FASTA file that's annotated based on what your input is and your uh, text file, which then will tell you how many coding sequences were identified, how many contigs, and some other annotation statistics that are important for you evaluating how well your annotation was. And that also allows you to assess how well your assembly was based on coding sequences. So for example, and again, uh, I'm talking about a lot of future videos, but uh, another future video I could make would be explaining how I triage assemblies and annotations to kind of uh, assess quality. And one of those things that I, I look at is not only the number of contigs in my assembly and the total length of the genome that's, that's assembled, but also how many coding sequences were annotated. If I see a significantly higher number of coding sequences that get annotated, for example, if I have a Staph aureus genome that all of a sudden has 6,000 CDSs annotated, when I know that there's usually only 1,100 or so, then that tells me that there's something wrong with the assembly. If it's picking up a lot of pseudogenes, that probably means that I just have a really bad assembly and it's uh, trying to annotate a bunch of, of junk. So that's a, that's a red flag that we can talk about. And there's a number of other red flags that we can talk about when it comes to triaging your assemblies and, and deciding which things to eliminate or to resequence, for example, uh, and if you're really in, interested in, um, in that. Uh, and then after this, we just uh, export these data, which we can uh, talk about in uh, another video to come. So more in a little bit.